Now, interestingly enough, cash budgets, as we're going to be building here, can be one of the more challenging things for an accountant to do. You might think, doesn't seem that hard, Mike. Why is that? Well, remember, all of your training for this exam is based on U.S. GAAP accrual basis accounting, and now I'm asking you to shut all that off and think on the cash basis. I no longer care when a sale is earned. I no longer care when an expense is incurred. All I care about for a cash budget is when am I getting the money, when am I actually using the money and spending that money. So we need a lot of data to make that come together. Remember, this budget typically follows some of the others we've already gone through. We've done the sales budget, the cost of goods sold budget. We've got all that pulled together. Now we're going to take those key pieces of information and synthesize them to figure out what our cash needs are going to be. So as we take a look first off at this sales fact pattern, I want you to first note that we have both credit sales and we have cash sales. Now for cash sales, that's easy. You sell it, you got cash right then and there. So we don't have to worry about lag. If we sell $705,000 in May, we're collecting $705,000 in May. Credit sales are a different animal, though. Look down here. Historically, we find we don't start collecting these amounts until the first month after the sale. So that means if we were looking at $750,000 in May, we'd be collecting a big chunk in June, a little bit more in July, a little bit more in August, and there's going to be 3% of it we're never going to get. So even though, yeah, we have that sale, that's effectively a non-cash transaction. We're never getting paid. So we have, when we figure out our cash budget, what isn't important is 750. What is is, okay, how much are we going to collect from that 750 the following month and the month after and the month after? So bear that in mind. That's our sales fact pattern. Then we have our outflows, our expenses. Now the way we did it here is we've broken it up into multiple categories and the month incurred. So for example, we have materials. We bought some in May, right? So 585 in May and 410 in June. And then we see the pattern. They typically pay for materials mostly in the month, 60%, and the other 40% later. And that kind of makes sense. If you figure, well, we're on 30-day payment terms, we usually try to pay a little bit faster than that, that makes sense. So from a disbursement perspective, if we're looking at June, the cash outflow in June would be 40% of May's expenses and 60% of June's. And the same as we go down the line, if you're looking at labor. Labor is paid in the month, not surprising, right? Most people want to get paid in the month they do the work. Overhead is a split, but there it's 100% incurred and so on. So we have this allocation, yep, here's the accrual basis number, but here's how the money's actually going to go out the door. All right, so now that we have that baseline data, we know what's coming in the door, we know what's going out, we need to synthesize that to complete the cash budget. So I've created the world's greatest T account. This is my wallet. Boy, I wish this was my wallet. Because according to this, on June 1, there's $45,000 in my wallet. I guarantee you there was not $45,000 in my wallet on June 1st. There was not $45,000 in my wallet on any June 1st. But for the sake of our example, We'll pretend there was. So I got 45000 And then at the end of the month, I want to have 65000 Now, don't worry where that name, number came from. Typically, a company is just going to establish what they want as the desired ending balance. We're doing a forecast. So we're just establishing, yeah, I'd like to end the month with $65,000. Now, it could be that there's an arbitrary minimum where the company says we never want to have less than fifty. Or it could be, well, we want to have enough to meet certain cash commitments that we know are coming in July. Don't worry about that. For the sake of this problem, let's just assume that's the number you were given. So now we just have to go through and figure out what am I spending and what am I receiving. So here are my receipts, right? So here's my cash receipts. And this is coming from the first slide, the sales slide. I know I've got my cash sales for June. That's the easy part. If I sell it in June, as for cash, I've got the cash coming in in June. The trickier part, here's all my credit sales. So I've got 70% of May and 17% of April and 10% of March. So I'm going to take each month's sales times that percentage to figure out how much of that's being collected in June. Add it up, and I come up with this number, $1,400,750. That sounds pretty good, a million four, sure. Then we come over here. Remember my expenses. I have materials, right, and that's being split 60-40 by month. Labor's all in, overhead all in, OPEX all in, and then I'm also going to split my capital expenditures at the rate of 80 and 20. Again, it's just multiplication, just applying those percentages. And I come up with 1517000 That's not so good, because I spent more than I brought in. Ultimately, I'm, I'm left with a plug figure. Okay? 
And based on this, I can look at this and go, well, if I started with 45000 I'm spending well past that. I mean, even this and this together isn't enough to pay for that, much less leave me with an ending balance. I need more money to come from somewhere, which means I need a number to go right there. And what is that number? Well, as a plug, to make this thing balance, I need an extra $136,250. Where's that coming from? More likely than not, I'm going to have to get that from some kind of financing source. Use my letter of credit or line of credit at the bank, establish a new loan, borrow it from my owner, I don't know, but I'm going to have to get that money from somewhere. So this is how a company can anticipate future financing needs, and hopefully if they have good months, they can also figure out maybe they can pay off some of those loans. So that conceptually are how all the building blocks from our expenses budgets and our sales budgets can be combined to help us figure out our cash budget.